welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. This time we are spinning the landscape Rolex that I carded in my blend book. Links down below to both the book and the demo video. This demo video blew you guys' mind. I was so happy with how excited you were about it. So a lot of you were like, when are you going to spin this? And I knew I was going to do it for a Spin Weekly demo, but now I feel a lot more excited because I know you guys want it. <laughs> um, they're a little folded up right now, but these are the Rolex that we are going to spend today. And if you haven't watched the landscape video, if you want to get a full sense of what I'm going for, go ahead and watch that to see the picture that I'm trying to copy. Um, it's like a blue sunsetty tree with pinky flowers going on. So I'm going to spin these perfectly end to end to not disrupt the landscape that I created on the blending board. And then I wanted to, I really like plied yarn. I'm on a huge plied yarn kick right now. So I didn't want to leave it a single, but I obviously didn't want to center pull ball it on itself or else I would screw up the picture. And so I was, I was, I was, I was lost and I thought about it and then I put it aside. And then when I was picking fiber for a completely different project, I came across this little sample that Mary of Kamaj Fiber Arts sent me. Um, she sent fiber for the book Bat, uh, links down below of course. Um, and you can find the link to this in the supply section, as always. Um, so she sent this. It's a Merino Soft Silk blend. And at the time, it was brand new. She was just testing it out. So I'm a little late on the bandwagon. But it's really soft black, and it's got this... It's like a platinum gray soft silk in there. So I'm going to spin this as my plying partner to the landscape and I think that's going to really bring like depth but not overwhelm the picture of the landscape so we'll see how that works so I will meet you on the other side and hopefully be super excited about how it went bye down on my phone and like make a note of it to talk about at the end but the camera was right here I was like why don't I shoot a super overexposed note it occurs to me as I have my first roll lag sort of halfway done here when you're spinning landscape roll lags does it matter if you start on whatever end, like does the end that you start with matter to the pattern of the landscape? Should you go like this to get a most, like the most accurate portrayal? 
or should you go like this to get a most accurate portrayal? And I don't know. Um, and then how would we be able to tell? Because when you knit it, the gauge and the needle size and the swatch size will all dictate the way it looks. And are we going for inspired by it? Or are we going for a perfect portrayal of the image that we created on the blending board? And then how do we get that? Now, it, it occurs to me that crocheting uses more yarn per stitch, ergo less accuracy because more, more of the yarn is smushed into one spot to distort the photograph. Photograph. Well, a knitting stitch uses less yarn, still distorted, so a woven piece with a very, 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 very small warp seems like the only way to get an accurate sort of finished item of the picture on the blending board. So then you would need to make the piece that you are weaving the exact size of your blending board cloth. And then you would, if you weave this way, you would want to start this way. I feel like somebody should do that. And I'm thinking about I should do that, but I have two problems. One, I don't have a weaving device. I could DIY one, but I'm not... I'm not sure how that would go. I'll have to think about that. And then my next concern is, I have these roll eggs and I put them in the bag to keep them fairly nice. I mean, this one's kind of got some cosmetic problems, but you know, fairly nice. I know what progression order they're in, but which was the right side of the board's end and which was the left side of the board's end. I didn't mark that. So even if I'm trying to, there's no way for me to actually know for sure what way I'm doing it. I might have to try that in the future. Alright, that was my ramble in the middle. Um, I'm glad I captured it on video because that whole thought process would have been a pain in the butt to uh, take down her notes. <laughs> so, we'll see what I come up with. piece of weaving that was the same diameter measurement, diameter, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say, as the blending board. And then I pre-drafted my roll egg and I was like, actually we are stretching that out. So does that matter? Okay, this is the problem with being dyslexic, is it's difficult to kind of wrap my brain around two different 3D objects and see where they, uh, they coincide. That, that kind of breaking my brain here. It's too vivid, but also too sketchy. Um, so yeah, would you, would you, if you had it and it stretched out, then basically you would be layering the more length, like the stretched out version. So like if a piece was this big on the blending board, it might be like a few yards in the yarn, right? Depending on the diameter that you spend. But then the roll egg itself 
is like this much fiber directly rolled upon, like directly rolled up. So would you measure this and then make yarn to fit into this, this hole? I feel like I'm overthinking this. I'm going to leave this in here so that way you guys can experience what I think about when I do this kind of thing. But I am really wrestling with this subject. to ply it with a really interesting sample I got from Mary Egbert of Camage Fibers. It's her new merino soft silk blend. Um, when she sent in fiber for my book Bat, links down below, um, she tucked this in with the soft silk. And it was really cool to work with. Um, it was just like mind-blowingly soft. Mind-blowingly. And those of you who watch my videos know that I pretty much hate Merino 24-7 all the time, does not like. <laughs> I, I will specifically avoid Merino. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. I loved how it combined with the soft silk and I thought they really balanced each other out well. Um, and it wasn't like a, an obnoxiously fluffy Merino. Um, I don't know if that was because it was incredibly treated 
or because it was so super fine. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, hiccup. It was so much better, but it was good. Uh, I did notice that it was a lot more difficult than I expected to draft. And by that, I don't mean it was difficult to draft. It was just not buttery soft like I had anticipated. So just, just like a side note. But I think it went really well. thing I wanted to note is you can kind of see there's a couple of bits of the very top of the sky, the blue part, that I didn't ply with the black because I ran out of black, but it was at the blue. <sighs> Sorry, Moriani, pregnant person. Um, it was at the blue and I really actually loved how the black came up and then at the very end it stopped and completely went away, so the blue actually played onto itself from the center pole ball. And because the landscape that I was copying has these really intense trees, it was kind of like, at the top of all those beautiful trees, we see sky. So I, I, I didn't feel regret or bummed about that at all. I was impressed. That was, that was an awesome accident, and I totally did that on purpose to represent the sky above the trees, yeah. Because I premeditate my stuff that much. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear if you learned anything, any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos. And I will see you next time.